Francisca Fernandez. Doctors found a tumor on the mouth of her pancreas. We also want to remember her also is going to be in Memorial Hospital to have a surgery Wednesday on her eyes. God is able. Amen. We also want to continue to pray for the Griffin family, um, her family, and our prayers. Her mom, Ann Milton, passed away on Friday. Funeral arrangements are pending. Yeah. Looks like it may be Saturday. We'll let you know. Um, we want to continue to pray for the families that are out of town on vacation. God will keep his hands of protection upon them. Amen. Amen. Raise your hand. God knows all these yes. things. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Lord, we come to you. Thank you, dear Lord, for everything that you do. Thank you, dear Lord, for the power, Lord, that you give to us, Lord. The strength that you give us, Lord. I pray, God, that you will touch in all these things. I pray you would come and bring the things of God. I pray, Lord, that they would be able to touch you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would keep your hands and protection upon the families and all the roads, God, traveling, God. Don't break your children, God. I pray that they have a good time, but a safe time, oh God. I pray for every need, God, in this house of the I pray that you would be the Lord.
Amen. Well, thank the Lord for His goodness and His merciful kindness to all of us. Aren't you glad you're in church today? Amen. I feel good being in church today. Praise God. We each and every one of you here this morning. Uh, as you know, there's uh, no evening service today, so our service will go a little longer uh, today. Uh, all of our classes will be coming in about 11.30, and we'll have another good time of worship and praise, but the college will be preaching to us in that part of the service, so we're just expecting the Lord to just do wonderful things around here today. How many of you come here hungry for something from the Lord? Amen. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. And I think that's uh, talking about more than just money. Amen. Uh, you want something from the Lord, you give to Him. And that's worship and praise. And Amen. He'll just open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings Amen. upon you. Amen. That's why I love to worship and praise Him. And it feels good doing it. And at the same time, the blessings of the Lord just rain down upon people who really give themselves to worship and praise. Amen. But it is good to be in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning. I want to turn your attention to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and we'll begin reading at verse number 24. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Amen. Verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Amen. Then verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, somebody shout greater riches, greater riches. than the treasures in Egypt. Amen. For he had respect under the recompense of the reward. Amen. Verse 25 again tells us that Moses chose rather to suffer affliction Amen. with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin Amen. for a season. I want to talk to you today about the temporary pleasures of sin. Right. The temporary pleasures of of sin. Let's ask the Lord to talk to our hearts. Lord, we're so thankful for your goodness and mercy to us today. Thank you for the wonderful privilege we have to be in your house this morning. So thankful for each and every one that's here. I pray that you will minister to our hearts. Pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Rest upon me and on this congregation. To hear the word of the Lord and to receive your word and respond but in a very positive way. We'll praise you now in Jesus' wonderful name. Everybody shout in Jesus' name. Don't you love that name? Don't you appreciate the name? Oh, yeah. Name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Lord bless you now. You may be seated. There are some things about the sin that I would like to point out today that all of us need to understand and realize. And the first thing is that sin is a choice. It is a choice. The Bible tells us that Moses refused Pharaoh's court and the treasures that were found there to seek God and His reward by faith. It was a choice that, that uh, Moses made, choosing rather to suffer affliction. No one forced him to do it. It was the choice that he made Amen. to suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Amen. And so Moses made his choice, and he was around 40 years old and uh, eminently successful, but he made that choice to suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Amen. Moses valued suffering affliction with God's people greater than the temporary pleasures of sin. Amen. 
He valued the reproach of Christ, greater riches and opportunity than all the treasures that were found in Egypt. Hallelujah. He respected the promises and the rewards of God, which he believed with, with simple faith. Verse 6 Amen. in chapter 11 of Hebrews tells us so. Adam and Eve made a choice. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and then 1 Timothy 2 and 14. They, they made a choice, and of course we all know it was a terrible choice that Adam and Eve made. Of course, we know that Adam was not deceived. He, he made the choice. Adam uh, should have taken a stand. He should have stood up and said, No, you, Eve, you made the mistake. You, uh, you uh, did what you weren't supposed to do, but I'm not going to fall into that. He made the choice to follow his, his wife. Uh, the Bible tells us in Genesis 13, that Lot chose the lush and prosperous plains of Jordan, which included Sodom. It was the choice that he made. Amen. Uh, Joseph made a choice to honor God over temporary <laughs> pleasures on a distant business trip in Genesis 39. Achan made a choice to look, to consider, to lust, and to take in Joshua chapter 7. And oh, what a high price that he had to pay. He and his family and all of his possessions stoned to death. What a, what a high price that Achan made and paid when he made that choice. He made the choice. Ruth chose to leave country, language, relative, religion, and security for Naomi. And oh, what a blessing it was, the choice that Ruth made to follow Naomi. David made a choice to stay at home to take a walk, to look, to consider, to inquire, and then to take something that belonged to somebody else. And of course we know the consequences of the choice that David made. Daniel made a choice not to defile himself for the king's portion in Daniel chapter 1. And oh, what the great rewards that came to Daniel. Yes, I'm telling you, God's going to reward those who make the right choices. Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, they chose to misrepresent their giving to Peter and to the church. And we know the consequences of the choice that they made. Yes, he fell dead and the disciples' feet and his wife also because of their lying, their deception. Amen. Amen. See, we, we make many choices each day. What we will or will not do, what we will or will not say, what we will or will not think. We make the choice. Nobody is forcing us into sinning. We make that choice. So sin is something that a person chooses to do. And then secondly, sin has pleasure. It has pleasure. There, there was... There was sinful pleasure in abundance for Moses in Egypt. If he was to just choose Pharaoh's court and treasure, there were plenty of sinful pleasures for Moses in Egypt. Of course, I, I would not be an honest preacher of the word today if I foolishly denied that sin has its pleasures. We all know that sin has pleasure. The Bible just told us so. The pleasures of sin. And so sin does have pleasures. Men and women do not aggressively pursue sin for its pain, for its punishment, or for its consequences. The old man can only see and promote the pleasure. But the new man sees the pain and the judgment that comes because of sin. He surely enjoyed Many pleasing thoughts from the three types of sin taking the fruit. But she made that choice. Delilah gave pleasure, no doubt, to Samson. Else why was he so taken by her? You see, fornication surely has its forbidden pleasure with horrible results to follow. The wise man tells us so in Proverbs 9, verse 13 through 17. See, when you are 
in great need or trouble, it is sweet to deceive others to obtain your choice. Proverbs 20 and 17 declares that. The prodigal had a great time in a far country wasting his estate with riotous living. It was a choice Amen. that this young man made. It was his choice. Nobody ran him away from home. Nobody said you're no longer welcome around here. He made the choice Amen. to leave the father's house and to waste all of his living and all of his money in riotous living. Herod made a choice out of political expediency to kill James and to take Peter also in Acts chapter 12. And, and we know the result of the decision and the choice that Herod made. We don't have time today to read all of these scriptures, but you can go back later and study them and see the results and the consequences Amen. of making a bad choice and then also the rewards of making the, the right and the good choice. And so, sin does have pleasure. Amen. But number three, sin's pleasure is limited. Amen. It's limited. Amen. It is only for a season. Mm -hmm. The book of Hebrew tells us. It's, it's temporal. It's only for a season. Amen. And let me tell you, if, if you sin your whole life with pleasure, eternity in hell is much longer. The pleasure of sin is only for a season. And of course, Jesus would ask in Mark 8 and 36, if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul, is it worth it? Amen. No, he said you profit zero if you were to gain the whole world and lose your soul. Well, yes, there's pleasures in sin, but when all the pleasures are gone, what's the result of all of that? Was it really worth it? How shall we compare the lives and pleasures of the rich man and Lazarus? Of course, we know the rich man. He, he had riches. He had much and so much more than, than Lazarus had. And, but listen to the rest of the story. The rich man died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. But now look at Lazarus. The beggar died. Lazarus died. But all oh, the rest of the story, he was carried to Abraham's bosom by the angels. What shall we think of the rich fool that's found in the book of Luke chapter 12? Ground brought forth plentiful. I believe Brother Powell talked to us last Sunday about that. He built his bigger barns, tore down his other one, built bigger barns, stored all of his goods, and sat back and said to his soul, Eat, drink, and be merry. You have so much laid up. You have nothing to worry about. But that very night, God said, You fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. And who shall all of these things be that you've acquired? You can't take them with you. You can't take them with you. We know there are, there are those living today just like the rich man who are rich in this world's good, but they're not rich toward God. Amen. I, I, I'd, I'd rather live in a, in a cabin by the city dump and have God in my life. And to live in the finest mansion that money can buy. And I have God in my life. So how can you feel that way? Well, read about the rich man in the Bible. Read about the other rich man in the Bible. And you'll understand that if you gain the whole world and lose your soul. If you have everything this world has to offer and you stand before God at judgment day. Sin is limited. The pleasures, rather, of sin is limited. Amen. In fact, James 4 and 14 tells us that you can't even boast of tomorrow, for you know not what a day will bring forth. Amen. The triumph of the wicked is very short. Amen. And the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment, Amen. what Job declares in Job 20, verse 4, through seven. 
It only pleases the flesh for a very short time. But it leaves the spirit empty, guilty, vexed, and confused. That's the pleasure of sin. Did Adam and Eve even get a second bite? Or were they instantly disappointed? Were they instantly shocked and, and naked and realized they were naked? How long did Judas enjoy his silver? How long? His death was not a very pretty thing. How long did the rattling of the coins in his money bag how long did it sound good? How, how long? Not very long. Did he realize what he had done and realize for 30 pieces of silver he sold his precious Lord? I'm going to tell you, there are people today who are selling him for far less than that. How long is ungodly and wicked sex pleasant? How long is drinking Pleasant. How long is partying and lying and covetous ambition and anger and envy and stealing and hatred and the list goes on. How long? Amen. All these things, pleasure. I'm telling you, the pleasures of sin, it does not really satisfy. It teases and deceives with shallow pleasure. And then you wonder why so empty. Why? People try so many things and yet they're not satisfied. And they try something else and they keep going deeper and deeper and further and further. That's the pleasure of sin. It's only for a season. Right. Oh yes, it starts out with pleasure and then I've been pastoring a long time, preaching a long time and I've had to visit people in mental hospitals and I visited people in medical hospitals and, and, and to see the result and the consequences of sin and all of these things that they started out it started out pleasure but then you look at them in these conditions and realize they look at you with glassy eyes and say Can you, would you please get me out of here You stand there helpless and you want to and you, all you can say is I can but I'll pray for you. Pray for you. To see what the pleasure of sin that it was at the beginning but to see what it's done to them now. Amen, amen, amen. I can tell you some stories of people personally that I've dealt with through the years that, that I've talked with them and prayed with them and and tried to get them to lay these things down and realize that, that it, it's, it's going to bring death to you. Right. And have to walk by their casket and realize that what used to be pleasure Amen. is now their death. How long? How long? It's only for just a little while. It does not satisfy somebody cries sin's pleasure sin's pleasure is limit it's got a limit to it it's got a limit to it it's limited it's only temporary it's only for a season the fourth thing is sin has natural consequences the wicked flatters himself in his sinful deceit until he finds his choice to be hateful. Psalms 36, 1 and 2. If you don't believe that, just consider the suicides, the divorces, the drugs, Amen. the therapies among the successful and popular of our nation. Right. Yeah. We've yeah. seen these things, and, and you're aware of all of these things. People that have anything that money can buy, and yet, look at the result and the consequences of, of their sinful actions and activities. Amen. Consider examples of foolish animals led to the slaughter or caught in traps. That's the way it is with people. That's the way sin does an individual. It becomes a trap. It's like, like a spider that, that makes 
makes its well to catch those flying insects that it can feed upon them. When they get caught in the well, they can't, they try and they fight, but once they're caught, there's no escaping. They're in the trap. They can't get away. That's what the pleasures of sin will do in your life. Yes, it may be fun for a while, but then it becomes a trap. Amen. It's a well that you get caught into. The wages of sin, the Bible tells us, is death. Man, drunkenness. Oh, yeah, it starts out with just the casual social drink. And, and that doesn't satisfy. You've got to have more. You've got to have more. Oh, I can handle it. That's what they all say. Oh, I can handle it. And then they get a little more, drink a little more. And before you know it, they try to stop. And they realize just how far they've gone. Oh, the drunkard gets sick. The drunkard shames himself. Kills a child with a car. Wastes his money, wastes his time, loses his memory, loses his job, has a hangover, and builds a horrible addiction. It starts out with pleasure. Drunkenness. Oh God, I have such a hatred for alcohol. I, I, I've never really. Taste, well, I, I tasted of it one time when I stuck a knife in the top of a hot beer can and it splashed on my face. Got a little bit. And I've got an uncle who's an alcoholic on his way back from one of those beer joints. Drunk. And around a curb too fast. Truck runs off the road. Hits a tree. The truck catches on fire and he burns to death. Wow. I have a hatred for alcohol. Amen. Oh, it starts with just pleasure, billboards. I, I, I want to go and, and just rip the billboards. And, and, uh, or either write in bold letters. This is not the rest of the story. Amen. Oh, yes, it looks enticing. And, and their advertisement, it's, it's pleasure. It, enjoy it. And they don't show you. The drunkard burning to death in his automobile to show you the families that are weeping and crying and are casted of a child that died because of an accident caused by a drunk. Oh, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to show you what sin is today. The devil won't show you this. No, the world won't show this to you. It takes a preacher to get behind the pulpit. gentleman in Tupelo, Mississippi that I worked with while I was there with Brother Greenway for a little period of time. It might have been during the time my wife was pregnant. And uh, so I was with him there in Tupelo in uh, Outreach and met a, a man and uh, invited him to church, taught him Bible study. And uh, he was an alcoholic. I'll never forget one night he showed up to church and he was drunk. Came on into church and came to the altar. After it was over, he took me out to his car and opened the trunk and did a beer, just cases of beer back there. And uh, he was he was in bad shape. And I tried my best. I worked with him and worked with him, but finally his liver was destroyed. He died without God. And I, I saw that. I thought, oh God, if he, if he would have just, if he had just realized the truth about what was pleasure in the beginning, Amen. just realized it. And all of us have stories we could tell today. Oh, people need to wake up and realize, oh, it's the party time. It's the party time. Let's drink. Let's have fun. Let's be merry. Let's do all of this. But they don't show you. All of the other things that I can tell you today about drunkenness. What about an affair? 
The adultery destroys four souls, two marriages, two families. Oh, the devil doesn't tell you that. All he does is get in your mind and heart the pleasure of one night and falling into an affair. He doesn't show you how many are hurt and how many are destroyed because of an affair. Telling the sin has natural consequences. It destroys boldness and leaves the wicked fleeing from nothing but his own guilt and fear. The flattery of a strange woman is wonderful. But Proverbs 5 and chapter 9 also tells us that her end is bitter and painful. So he says, don't, don't be caught by the flattery of that strange woman. You better, young man, you better count the cost in your life. But that pleasure is going to lead you in two. When you're tempted to do these things, understand and realize you don't just hurt yourself, but so many others who are hurt because of it. Oh. Consider David's warning to Solomon about the attraction and destruction of adultery. Amen. Proverbs chapter 7. Oh yes. Amen. It flatters the deceitful heart to fantasize against reality thus creating great discontentment. Oh yes. I, I gotta have this. I want this. And, and you get so caught up, you become deceived in the fantasy of these things. Uh -huh. Thinking, well, you know, just, just one night or just one fleeing. Sometimes that's all it takes. Right. Amen. That's it. Brings so much destruction into a life. Consider Romans 6 21 and Paul's rhetoric and Ridiculing question about sin and its fruit. Consider Amnon. Amen. There's a great lesson here in 2 Samuel chapter 13. Lusted after his own sister and, and desired her. And, and then by the help of a so-called friend went in with her and defiled her. And, and then after it was all over, the pleasure and the excitement and he hated her. Amen. Well, it was pleasure at first it turned him to hate and guilt and, and then it cost him his life. Let me tell you something. If you neglect your spiritual life, you will suffer for it. You will have a lean soul that is pain itself. If you neglect your children, you will suffer for it. If you neglect your marriage, you will suffer for it. I'm just telling you here today that sin has its natural consequences. Amen. So many suffer, so many have suffered because of this pleasure of sin, Amen. which is only for a season. But not only that, but sin has spiritual consequences. You know, it it gives place to the devil who then gains an opening in your life for destruction. Amen. What Paul talks about in Ephesians 4 and 27. I, I, I want to tell you the truth here today. The devil's only purpose in your life is to destroy your soul. Amen. You hear me? The devil is not your friend. He's out to destroy your soul. you're a raving lunatic among the tombs, then he'll probably leave you alone. <laughs> Amen. Once he's drug you about as far down as he can take you, then he'll walk off and leave you and smile and laugh while he's doing it. You better hear me today. The devil and sin in this world is not your friend. Amen. Hmm. It grieves him quenches the Holy Spirit. You lose power and might to choose righteousness. And you, you lose all desire for confession and repentance. And your soul is left empty, dry, lean, and painful. You lose your hope 
new covenants of eternal life. You lose your joy of the Lord and His salvation. Your prayers will be hindered by neglecting your spouse. It vexes your new man who deeply is offended by the hypocrisy and sin. Oh yes, there are spiritual consequences of sin. And then it brings the supernatural judgment of God into your life. Amen. Let me tell you, He is a rewarder in a good way. Hebrews 11 and 6. But He is also a rewarder in a bad way. Amen. Psalms 18 and 26. The way of the transgressor, the Bible tells us, is hard. Proverbs 13 and 15. God's chastening is, is not something to ignore, folks. Consider the judgments on David, a man after God's own heart. Amen. I don't have time to go into all of this, but you can do it later. Look at the judgments on David. And he was a man after God's own heart. Amen. It was because of sin, it started out to be pleasure. Amen. It ceases because it's only temporary. It's only for a season. Amen. Moses begged repeatedly for mercy to see Canaan but his one offense was enough. Amen. But he said, oh, it won't hurt just one time. How sad the story of a man that left his house one night after a heated argument with his wife and went to a bar and got drunk and picked up a strange woman and went to bed with her and then it wasn't long until some time later realized that he had AIDS because of that one night. That one night. Don't be deceived by sin to think that it's not going to hurt just one night, just one moment, just one thing. Eli did not restrain his son, so God took away his family in the most painful process. Let me tell you, if you can sin and not be chastened, then you're a reprobate. He blows on your other efforts according to Haggai 1, 5 and 6. You see, sin in one area defiles all areas according to Haggai 2, verse 10 through 14. It takes away the presence and the fellowship of God. Sin takes away the presence and fellowship of God. Instead of peace and fellowship, you have guilt and desertion. Amen. You separate His ear from your prayers and His arms from your deliverance. Amen. That's what sin does. Amen. That's what the pleasures of sin Amen. will do. But not only that, it is the way to hell. Psalms 88 Verse 4 through 9 and 14 through 18. For the Lord will send his waves, billows, and terrors to buffet your soul. In fact, he can leave you with the demons of hell to torment your soul and afflict you, according to 1 Corinthians 5 and 5. Sin, the pleasures of sin, it is the way to hell. Then, number six. I want to encourage you in the service today to choose Jesus Christ and righteousness regardless of the cost Amen. and zealously reject the pleasures of sin like Moses did. Amen. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see, he offers an abundant life with joy and peace. Only rebellion hinders you. I'm telling you, God's here today to give you abundance. Think about it. Jesus Christ chose you in love for an eternal inheritance. How in this world could we choose sin when He chose us in love for eternal inheritance? How could we walk out of this place today and turn our back on Him fall into sin. Think of the goodness of Jesus and all He's done. Amen. Amen. Praise God. 
There is also an eternal reward that far outweighs any sacrifice or affliction here on this earth. Amen. Whatever you have to go through to live for God. Nobody said that living for God was going to be a bed of roses. Amen. Well, I guess it might be. But when you get in a bed of roses, you find there are some things in there that hurt. Yes, called thorns. <laughs> But I wouldn't trade this life for any Amen. life in this world. Amen. Because I live long enough to see people who have followed the ways of sin and it looked like pleasure and fun and excitement for a while. But the end of it all, the end of it all, was enough to convince me Moses made the right choice. Amen. You make the right choice to live for God. And all the devil's going to try his best to make it tough and hard for you. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be worth every heartache, every trial, every battle you have to fight. It's going to be worth it all. Amen. Hear the Lord say, well done, my good and Amen. Amen. You see, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. This is how the elders obtained a good retort according to Hebrews 11 and 2. You see, one view of his glory and holiness turns every sinful choice into miserable guilt. Hmm. I just want to declare to you here today that it is possible to meet the Lord Jesus Christ with joy and confidence rather than with, with shame. Amen. It's going to mean so much to just stand before the throne of God one day with joy and confidence of serve the Lord. I've lived for God. I've been faithful. Woo! I don't want to stand before Him with my head hanging down in shame knowing that He's got a whole lot of bad things to reveal to everybody about me. I want to tell you, I'm glad I've got it under the blood. I said, I'm glad i got my sin under the blood. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh yeah, look at the flood. Remember what happened in the flood. This is how the Lord and we measure love. Simply what will you give in exchange for Him? Woo! I'm going to tell you, there's not enough money in the world to trade Jesus for. There's not a woman beautiful enough to trade my experience with Jesus Christ for. There's, there's, not, there's not a pleasure in this world Amen. that can come close to the joy that I have in living for God. Amen. I wouldn't trade it for anything this world has. Because I understand and realize that I've seen it happen. But your real joy and real happiness does not come with things material things. Amen. Amen. If that's the case, then why? Why are rich, wealthy, successful people committing suicide? Amen. If they only knew what you have today, if you're, you're full of the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name, living for God, if they could only experience that, they'd give it all. You know and to have what you have and to feel what you feel and experience what you experience. Amen. Oh yeah. So many become deceived and thinking that it's so much better out there. Hear me, young people. Listen to me. There's enough adults or elderly people in this building right now. I could give them a few moments here in this service and they would stand here and tell you. They tried it. They saw what misery and heartache it brought to their lives. And I tell you, don't be deceived by sin. Don't be deceived in thinking that you just got to indulge. You're missing out on this, that, and the other because you're a Christian and you're a child of God. You don't do these things. You're missing out on so much. They would stand here and 
to tell you, don't be deceived. Amen. I've been there, done that. Don't be deceived by sin, the pleasures. You've got to try to keep your life or rather, if you try to keep your life by choosing sin, you'll lose it. That's what Matthew 10 and 39 tells us. But if you lose it for Him, you will find it. Real life. Real life. If you're not born again by the Spirit, then no man has any hope for you but sin's pleasures. If you are born again the water of the Spirit, can only be happy by choosing Jesus Christ over sin. Amen. This is the best life. Amen. This is the best life. Amen. Living the life of holiness and separation from the world. Seeing how close you can get to God and how far you can get from this world. Amen. Come on.
everyone here today who would like to just slip your hand up and put it down and say, Brother Hodge, I want you in the church to pray for me. I realize I need God. I realize I'm, I'm going down the wrong path and I do want to change direction. I, I, I don't want to be lost. I want you to pray for me. I want this church to pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up and pray for me? I promise you we'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord, in your wonderful name, I pray for each and every one. Lift up their hands this morning. Others that I know that conviction has gripped their hearts today. If they come face to face with reality about sin, the pleasures of sin. Lord, I know that it has a hold of those here today. Sin has such a hold of you. Oh God, I pray in Jesus' name that the chains will be broken. Liberty and freedom will come in their hearts and lives before it's too late. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let the word that has been spoken today from your word continue to be deep in their hearts and names until this service is over. Spirit will continue to deal with said in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. We're just, just going to break here for just about five minutes, and then we're going to come right back in here, classes will be in here, we're going to worship and praise the Lord some more, Collins will preach to us in a little bit, amen. Come back ready for the Lord to minister to our hearts. Praise God. Greet our guests and visitors. Let them know I have more to have them with us today. Take about a five minute break and we'll start right now.